Hey crafty friends, I'm Amanda with Pear Blossom Press, and I have been talking to myself for the past couple minutes. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I hit the wrong button. Anyhow, welcome. Uh, thank you for hopping along with us. Um, if you are just getting here, this is part of Debbie, uh, Jeb Debbie J's Crafting Corners. Uh, thank you for 4K subscriber hop because she just hit that milestone on her channel and we are super excited for her. So way to go, Debbie. That's awesome. Uh, if you haven't been hopping along, there are prizes to win. Uh, there's a form, there's a link in the description below for the Google form so you can fill that out to be entered to win. And then I believe we're the last stop in the, sh in the hop. Um, so I've linked back to Debbie's first video. If you're just popping in a little bit late or missed any of them, you can follow along. I was actually traveling this weekend. It's been a, a crazy weekend. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to be catching some of those replays myself. Uh, let's see, any other housekeeping? I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see. If you're just going to tune in, um, I'll switch over to picture, picture. There we go. So I decided I wanted to make a light up card and we're going to be using our one lights. If you haven't seen these before, uh, they're really cool. They're just, it's one little light and you just press the button and, and it works. Uh, just think of this as a flat flashlight where you sandwich in between your cards. Uh, we do have some other ones and if you were just on Elizabeth's channel, you saw her using one of our easy lights, which has three lights at the ends of wires. You can kind of spread them out along your card or a scrapbook page. Uh, this one I, I thought would be a little simpler if you're, um, you know, just getting into it and wanna, wanna dip your toes in, this is a good way to do that. Uh, we also will be using some of our sentiment cardstock. Uh, this, I call this perfect black sentiment cardstock. It's only good for sentiments. And <laughs> um, it, I mean, if you look at it, I do want to show you. It's not quite A2. I'm going to tell you all the things that's bad about it before I tell you what's good about it. And I, I don't think I've shared this in a video before, so I wanted to show you guys. It's not quite A2. It's about a quarter inch shy on one side. But what's really cool about it is that it's coated. So if you want to emboss, if you like the, the white sentiments on black, this is the stuff. And if you want to write your own with like a white gel pen, it, it doesn't sink in. It just stays on top. So it melts like a dream and it's really great for that. Uh, it does have a white core. So again, back to the bad stuff. Um, it has a white core. So if you don't like that, you can just black it out with a Sharpie or a marker. Die cuts like a dream. It's great stuff specifically for doing your sentiments. So uh, I, I try to tell people, what it's good for and you know that way you you know what it's for and not what it's not for <laughs> i hope that makes sense um so we've we're going to use the sentiment stock we're going to use our one lights we are also going to use a, a push and a pull stamp um, this one is in our shop this is from trinity stamps we have a couple different options in the shop um, this one we we just got these in so i'm super excited to be carrying these i don't know where i've been i didn't realize they had the set and I love it. It's really cool. It's got some great stuff. Um, but like I said, we'll use the push and the pull. Um, at some point in the future, I will have double thick foam tape that's ours, but I don't have it yet. And it's kind of one of those ongoing struggles. <laughs> but I'm going to be using it today. If you don't have double thick foam tape, use two layers of regular foam tape because what you want to do, excuse me, is get the same thickness as your battery. So I hope that makes sense here. Um, if you just have, like I said, regular foam tape, use two layers. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, for the design, I'm going to use this uh, What's Up, wa what's up? What's up from Gina K. <laughs> this was an incentive set at one point, but I, it's available in her shop as well. I've already gone ahead and cut out a little mask because I know you don't want to watch me do that. But I do like this set. And we're going to use uh, one of these for the sub sentiments. And I'm hoping you guys will um, help me decide which sub-sentiment to use. We've got, you're such a bright light, you light up my life, you have the best ideas, you are brilliant. So I'm not going to use these, but one of these long ones. If you can help me decide on one of those sentiments, uh, sub-sentiments, it'll be a big thanks above it. And we'll use, this is Master Layouts 3, so we'll use one of these little flags from Gina. And then... My big thanks will be from Lawn Fawn, and I've gone ahead and cut that out a couple times already. 
So three times from white cardstock and one time from a white glittery cardstock. I'm not sure if that's showing up on camera, but it is glittery. I think that'll be pretty. And I have a strip of just white paper. I'm going to show you how to put a tab under the battery so that when you mail it, your, your battery won't go dead. Um, and that's what we also need the pull stamp for, just FYI. Um, and then we'll probably use some of these white iridescent gems on there as well. So let's see, am I missing anything? I think that's all. All right, I just want to give you the ingredients before we start the recipe. So, oh, I've got an A2 card. It's top folding like that. And then I've got a piece of Bristol Smooth because we're going to ink blend. And that was the other thing I want you guys to help me decide on for my ink blending. Oh. We have some color choices. I want what my idea is that we will stamp a light bulb above the word thanks and then a sub sentiment underneath. It's black and white. Um, and I'm going to leave the light bulb mostly white, but I want to ink blend all the background behind it. So I was thinking yellow closest to the light. And then I don't know if I should use all of these colors, some of these colors. What do you guys think? I've got yellow, the squeezed lemonade, lumberjack plaid. I've got my sweater that matches, and you guys can't see it, but I do have plaid black and red shoes that match as well. <laughs> Not that you guys care, but I saw that one. I was like, lumberjack plaid. I'm buying them. So um, I have picked raspberry and villainous potion because that's a nice deep purple, which I think those two will, those will go in together. Should I use all four? Should I use three? I'm kind of wondering how this will be, but it looks kind of harsh right here. I don't know if I need that guy in between. All right, you guys think on that for a minute. Micah's going to keep track. <laughs> he's, he's helping me over, over in his desk. Um, and then we'll see what we're going to do with those. A full rainbow. I'm not doing a full rainbow. I'll do some of those colors. Oh, okay. Okay, so I've got my Bristol Smooth. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to stamp the light bulb. And I'm going to line up one of my thanks. And let's grab this guy. So I will trim my bristle down after I ink blend. But just in case, sometimes the edges we get a little heavy handed on one corner more than another. Um, so I left it a full A2 size. Uh, when I got, I got a big package in and I just trimmed or cut them all down to A2 pieces and then we started with all of our mini slim lines and slim lines, and I kind of wish I hadn't cut the whole pack down, but anyhow, that's neither here nor there. But um, so I've left it the full A2 size for now, and that way I'll trim it down after I ink blend. And if there's a, an ucky spot, I'll get rid of it. But I do want to basically center this up, and I'm going to use this light bulb because I already cut a mask for it. And I want to get it here. And then just as a placeholder while I'm lining up my card, I want to make sure that I'm not right in the middle. I want to be slightly up, but I also don't want to be too far up. Actually, not a problem because I have another solution for you. Sometimes when you're making a light up card, the light's really bright. And if you have foam tape underneath, you'll get a box of light. And then the box is kind of ugly because the foam tape blocks the light from coming through and we don't want that. So I'm going to move it down just a smidge, but I am going to show you how to avoid that with basically using some of that black paper as blackout if we need it, but I'll show you. Okay, so something like this. Get this guy out of the way because you know it's going to grab, that magnet's going to grab it. All right, and I'm going to stamp it. I have um, my favorite things, Extreme Black Ink. This is a good hybrid pad. Uh, Gina K also makes her amalgam, which is black. So if you're going to order the stamp set or something like that, and you don't have a good black pad, that one's a great one. Incon 3 has a great universal pad. There are a lot of pads, but the nice thing about these ones is that you can go with Copics or watercolor and not risk smearing anything. I hope that makes sense. And I've had this pad for at least two years since long before COVID, 
and it's still going strong. I haven't re-inked it or anything. But okay, so I stamped it twice. And then I'm just going to clean up this stamp and put it away because you guys know how it goes if you forget to put the little stamps away, right? Normally I edit this stuff out. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to grab that mask. I did uh, stamp it onto post-it paper. So like a full stick post-it. You can use Heffy Doodle's memo tape as well because it's a fully sticky background. And then I've got... This is a fun little trick. So I've got a clipboard and I put the waffle flower mat on it and I trimmed it down. So it was a little bit longer. This isn't the stencil one. The stencil's kind of smaller. So it would just fit on the regular, um, a regular clipboard. But if you get the bigger one and you want more workspace, you'll need to trim it down. But you can take the trim off pieces and put it on the back of your clipboard so it doesn't wiggle on you. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Okay. So now we're at the point where I need to know what colors you guys want. Did we have a, did we have a consensus? Hmm, I can see some of the comments here, but I don't have my glasses, so I can't really read them. Let's see, yellow picked raspberry and purple. You guys don't want lumberjack plaid? I want my red sweater. <laughs> everybody says all four. Oh. Well, not everybody, but that's the difference. Okay. We also had one vote for plaid. They like the, the, the lumberjack plaid. plaid. I'm not pulling out a stencil. Okay, so we're going to go with all four, and I hope that you guys don't mind that I think we're going to put, hmm, I wonder if that'll look better. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to start with yellow. I've got my little ballerina. Have you guys seen this from Make It By Marco? There's a, a little... Lazy Susan at the bottom, and you can hold a bunch of brushes, and it builds up taller. You can add tears and everything. So I am going to grab some of my brushes. These are Rabbit Hole Designs, but um, there are a lot of different companies that offer these. Purple. Okay. And I'll set these guys out of the way. Grab my plaid here, or sorry, the yellow first. I'm going to go with a light hand from the center, kind of working my way out. And yellow is one of those colors that always gets like erased, you know, when you're ink blending. So don't be afraid to go a little heavy with it, because when you come in with the red on top of it, it'll turn kind of orange. All right. Hmm. I'm really hoping this works with the red to the pink to the purple. Is that the wiggle? Hmm. I'm going to have to come back in and fix that yellow. I should have dipped off like this a little bit, but I didn't. It's one of those things when you go live, right? And I'm going to come up towards the bottom because the light itself is glowing, but the, that bottom is going to be gray, silver, you know, like a light bulb, the, the, the base of the light bulb where you screw it in. And then I'm going to get a little heavier. And if it's not a great blended background, you either A, add more ink until you get what you want, or you B, spritz water on it and make it distressed. <laughs> I like to do that anyhow. All right, I've got some red in there. I'm gonna grab that pick raspberry. Let's see how that works into the, the red and the purple. Might be a nice transition to go from pink to purple rather than red to purple. But it's kind of disappearing on me and I'm kind of okay with that. Also, I'm live and I'm not going back. So, <laughs> let's see how it works, right? So you guys all getting ready for a lovely holiday? I was just in Prescott this weekend um, visiting my dad. Uh, that's in Arizona. And I've heard, but I can't confirm, that Tim Holtz and Mario live in Prescott. It, the locals say Prescott, like a biscuit, Prescott. But it's spelled like Prescott. 
so I go back and forth because I'm not a local, but I enjoy visiting. And this uh, weekend was Acker Night, which is, they have a, a central courthouse that they light up and there's galleries and there's Whiskey Row, which is saloons and um, shops and things like that and some really cool art galleries. I don't normally like art galleries, but there's one called the Ian Russell Gallery and it's so cool. Everything in there, I, I could spend a whole lot of money, but I didn't. <laughs> um, but so we were there for Acker Night, which was a lot of fun, and then, then driving home and we took the electric car all the way from Southern California and I was not quite sure if I'd make it up the hill because there's a big hill at the end of the drive, but I did, 6%, so, <laughs> so yay. And if you're one of those people who worries about range anxiety, they call it, it's doable. I did it twice. Okay, so I'm just going to come back in with more ink here and make this a little more smooth. Like I said, if you don't get a great transition or if it looks splotchy, the answer is generally add more ink. And at this point I'm not needing to ink or like stamp off um, because I'm going on top of an inked area and it's still a little bit damp so it's going to move around for me just fine. And Bristol is really nice about allowing ink to move around. Um, I know Everybody has their favorite. Somebody told me about Bristol and I really liked it and I've got a huge package of it so I'm still working on my Bristol. And I'm gonna come back in with a little more purple kind of in the corners. And I'm gonna end up cutting off a fair chunk of that, of course. But that's okay. And then I want a little more yellow up the center of my bulb and letting it blend out. Now if you use brushes like this and you dedicate them and you get a little muddy, that's okay, you can clean it. <laughs> so that's what I do. If I, Because I started with it, it wasn't going to get contaminated, but as I end with it, you can probably see there's I'm picking up some of that red. So I'm not putting my brush into the red part for more ink. I grabbed it down here. And I'll do this and spread it a little bit. There we go. And I'm pretty happy with that. What do you guys think? But now I will clean this brush before I dip it into yellow again so that I don't contaminate my ink pad. Okay, let me just put lids on these guys. I'm glad we used the Lumberjack plaid. And then I'm going to, since I put all of that on this clipboard, I can move it out of the way. <laughs> All right, so this is one of those things that I also learned kind of the hard way. If you have a lot of ink on your mask, and this was, it's not the thickest paper, it's just a post-it note. Um, if I spritz water on here, the water may, uh, it'll grab that color that's on the mask, and it may bleed through, and then my white area won't be so white. So what I'm doing, because I'm not putting any other like black splatter or anything like that, I'm just going to put water. I'm going to peel my mask up out of the way so it's still a bright white. And then when I spritz, it can't bleed through and get ink in my non-colored spot. And for the sake of television, we'll go a little bit faster here. This is just a Norwex, Norwex cloth. It's a, microfiber. There we go. And I'm going to reuse this mask because if I have to fussy cut, it's going to be worth my while. So I just store it on my stamp and then I will put it back in the stamp pocket and I will use it until it dies and then I'll cut another one. And if you need multiples, you can stack up a stack of your little, um, post-its, I'm losing the words, uh, and then cut the stamp just on the top one and cut them all at the same time and then peel them apart. So if you're doing flowers or something like that where you need a lot of them, you can always do that trick. Okay, let's get stuff out of the way here. Why is your desk never big enough no matter how big it is? I don't know. Okay, while this is drying, and I can hit it with a heat gun, but I'm going to let it dry for a second. 
um, I'm going to do a couple other things. I'm going to stack up our thanks here. Get those out of the way. I like using these little trays to keep, you know, keep track of small things, die cuts, that sort of stuff. Um, I call it die cut jail. And I do like tweezers. I know not everybody does. Um, yeah, this one's not that big of a deal, but you have a couple options. Um, this is a trick I saw from your friend Corin. If you're using a glue that will stay wet a little bit longer, like this Barely Arts glue, you can put glue on and as you're hastily putting it on here, um, you can add it to the next layer as well. You don't have to get it perfectly lined up right now. We'll do it all in a second when they're all wet rather than line up each one individually. I thought that was a cool tip. I a lot of times use PVA glue, which is uh, great for paper to paper. So it would be perfect in this instance, but it does dry really quick. And this Barely Arts dries a little bit slower. The Gina K Connect also dries a little bit slower. So that's good for this type of thing as well. All right, so I'm getting it mostly in place. It's not 100%. And now I'm going to put some on the back of the glitter layer. And you don't have to have it everywhere. I just find it's easier with scripty words instead of making a bunch of dots to just kind of follow along in that track. There we go. And now I'll do all of them at the same time. See this? Make sure they're good and lined up. But because I use the glue that dries a little bit slower, I have a little more wiggle room and it's a little less effort. Squish down on him. There are a couple little hairs. I don't know why die cuts shed, but they do. Um, so I'll just kind of let it dry and then I'll fix those hairs at the end. I've got a couple plates here. They're from my little mini die cutting machine. I'll just set them on top and I'll actually we'll move it over here out of the way a little bit. And now we're ready for the sub sentiment. So I need a consensus. What'd you guys decide on? Let's see. Micah's reading comments for me, but he's not reading them out loud to me. <laughs> Maids? Yeah. I want one. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> that would be awesome. Can I have a cook too? I don't like to cook. Luckily, Michael likes to cook, so that's nice. Okay, so here's our options again. You are such a brilliant light. You light up my life. You have the best ideas, or you are brilliant. So you can just do one, two, three, or four if you want. But let's let's choose for those, or for our sub sentiment. I'm actually going to push, push more stuff back. My desk is ever shrinking. Yeah. Light up my life, one book. Okay. I should mention this card is going to go to Debbie, so let's let her cast the uh, final decision. Sounds like we're neck and neck. All right, brilliant it is. Hope that's okay, Debbie. <laughs> I'm going to line it up here. And since I'm going to be using a flag um, or a fishtail banner, um, I want to give myself enough room. And I don't think, let's see, is this big enough? Oh, hey. It is big enough. Great. Okay, so I'm going to just put my banner in place. I thought I was going to have to partially cut and move it around, but I don't. So yay. All right, so it's kind of basically centered there. Pick it up. Get my die out of the way. Get my magnet a little bit closer. And now I want to treat it with an anti-static powder tool. This one is from the Rabbit Hole Designs. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, you'll see a little bit of white powder because mine is, I, I pumped it a lot lately. 
<laughs> but I just put the lid on it, close it up, and now it's got more powder. If I was upside down, you'd have a lot more powder. So just just be aware how much powder you want. But I love it. And this, this is, um, it'll go all the way, so don't worry about that. And I'm going to grab my Versamark pad. And I've got this cool little, it Velcros on. This is from, um, it's from Miranda, and I'm trying to think of the, her handle, uh, Multiplicity Crafts. So she designed it, and it's cool. There's a little holder, like a stand, if you want to just keep using your pad over and over again. But you know how we've switched to the Misty, which our rubber stamps used to have handles, and now we need our ink pads to have handles. Um, so that's basically what she's created for us. And you can just buy extra Velcro and put it on the back of all of your pads if you wanted to, so that you could use this as a handle. I just keep it on my birthmark because that's the pad I use the most. And with words, I'm very gentle. I'm not pushing down hard. You do not want to do CPR with words because it'll spread out and it'll be hard to read. So I'm just lightly running my finger across. It's so much better to stamp twice if you need to. My friend Daniel, he stamps once to pick up the powder and a second time to transfer more ink, but there was plenty of ink already. Okay. Oh, I'll show you. Okay. And that powder is really nice. I think it's crinoline clay. I'm not sure. You can ask Mary. She tells you what it is. Um, so this is my white embossing powder. Here we go. And there's no stray powder. Let me turn on my gun real quick. I've got the pressure up a little bit, so I hope it's not too loud for you. Okay, we're ready. But look how fast it's setting. Done. Can you see that? Okay, now powder. I want to let it cool down just a little bit so I don't smear. But my powder, you can do this, and you can, oh, oh, there it is. Okay. This is my other trick. Pardon? Oh, okay. Uh, this is a used dryer sheet. And that'll get rid of all of your powder there. See? Nice and pretty. And we'll go ahead and die cut it. Now I have my little guy here, but this is, it only has a three inch opening. So I'm going to just cut this down a bit. And I could just cut it. But I like it when it's, um, when it's perfect. So I die cut. And we'll set that out of the way. We'll put this lined up. And I keep, so this is repositionable tape. It's, um, I think they call it highlight tape. There's a couple different kinds out there, but it's really low tack and it doesn't transfer to your paper. And even if it were to transfer to your paper, you could take it off with one of those gum erasers. All right. And these pads, boy, these pads have done a lot of work. <laughs> so I just put a little piece of, um, I think that's release paper I folded in half just as an extra shim. Although it comes with a shim. I don't know why I didn't Where fold it. Okay. Oh, Michael will answer you about the heat gun. The heat gun is not on the market yet, but I will have it out one of these days, just like my foam tape. Okay. You are brilliant. There we go. I'm going to put this away so I don't lose it. And then, did you guys see Debbie had that cool idea when she was working on one of her cards with the die cuts? She keeps all of her extras in a binder, which is great. I've just been shoving them in the back of my pockets. And she's right. I forget to look for them there. <laughs> but I used to have like one cup and then I had a million die cuts in there and I couldn't remember what I had in there and they all like stick to each other and that kind of didn't work for me so I started putting them in the pockets but now I want to try your binder idea Debbie okay so we've got our sentiment oh, I put that away okay I'll put it away later we've got our thanks you are brilliant it's gonna sit something like this I need to trim this down so that we have a border because I want it to be 
Actually, that looks kind of cool. Do you guys want a white border or no border? What do you think? White border, no border. It's kind of cool without the border. I don't know. There's a delay. No border? All right, so my card base, I didn't pay super close attention, but there is a white line here. So I do need to trim my card border down a little bit, or my card base down a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm not gonna use this little trimmer. I'm gonna use my more precise, big trimmer over here. So sorry. Oh, well, either way, All right. Either way, it'll fit now, you see? Now everybody wants a border. Yeah? Border now? Carol says, I like that not having a border is going to light up. It is going to light up, and it'll make the thanks. Thin, tiny border? I can do that, too. All right, let's go with a thin, tiny border, because I was thinking like a quarter inch, but now I'm thinking... Just the thin one. So a thin one I'm going to do on my more precise guy over here. I'll take off an eighth of an inch all the way around. And I hope I'm not completely out of frame. Okay, good. All right. So now we have... Eighth inch border, I hope that's okay. It's not quite a Gina K super skinny border. I'm gonna trim my card up just a smidge more. All right, that looks, that looks right. Let's do that. Okay, so we've got our one light. It's going to go here, and I need a pencil. Okay, tiny border is good. Micah says you guys like the tiny border. So I want, I don't need that in the way. You can do a couple things, but, um, oh, I need to also figure out, since I am doing the one light, where I think the push button should go here. That'll be about right. And this can go underneath it. Let's get that. All right, line that up like this. And then I'm not cutting a hole through the front of this because the light will shine through. See that? Is it showing up? Yeah. So the light is going through. This is heavy duty Bristol. I want to say it's. I'm not sure. I think maybe it's the 80. It's it's heavy Bristol, but the light will come right through it. So let's line it up. Yeah. Okay. We're good there. And here is my trick for a couple things. Line it up. And I'm my white card base is in there underneath. I'm going to put the yellow dot of my light. So can you guys see there's a yellow dot? I'm going to push this button, and you see that's where the light is, and this is where the button is. So I need to know on my card base where my light goes and where my button goes. So what I'm going to do is I will line this up with the yellow right in the center of that light bulb. And then if I want this button to be a little more here or there, I could wiggle it, you know, kind of just use the line between these uh, between the two points and figure out where you want them because it doesn't matter if this is a little bit crooked but I'll leave it straight just because that's easier does that seem right yeah and I know that the K isn't gonna block the word push and so I will grab my stamp set and this stamp sets nice it has some little like star kind of things 
Um, and this little tiny one, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to place it right on top of my light bulb. That's on my easy light. It doesn't have to be perfect or precise or anything other than right on top of the bulb. I don't care if the star is wonky, you know, it, it's just got to be right on top of that bulb. And then I'm going to grab the word push and I'm going to line it up on the middle of my push button. Hopefully. It takes a little bit of, a little bit of, uh-oh, sorry. Okay. A little bit centered like that. Get the light back in the place where the, the yellow dot is right in the center of my bulb. And I'm going to swing it around just a little. Forgot to put this stamp away. I'm going to close the lid and I'm going to pick up both of those stamps. Can you see them? Oh, oh, that's why I had so much trouble with it. I put the stamp on upside down. Oops. One more time. Sorry about that, guys. Live crafting. All right, the button's still right. You have to pick up. Oh, no, I didn't. I put it upside down again. <laughs> well, you know, live crafting. Okay, everything is still lined up. At some point, this is going to pick up. It's the first time I've done it with this particular stamp set. There we go, got it. All right, so the dot and the push. Now we'll move the light and the ink blended piece off. And this is our panel. And just use black ink for this. And I don't care if it's perfect. It doesn't need to be, you know, I don't care if it's like a, a perfect one because it's going to be hidden. This just allows me to now line this guy up like that so that when I put this layer on top, it'll be in the right spot. But I also need to put the push on this layer. So we will get this guy back out of the way. I'm going to clean this up. A lot of times I do this in the opposite order where I just do the push first and not the star. I don't even need the star anymore at this point because I'm not going to stamp the star onto our light bulb panel. I am going to put it away though so I don't lose it. Small stamps get lost. Okay, so now We'll line this guy back up. And with that tiny border, it's really easy to line up. There we go. And I think I want this in white. So good thing I cleaned that. Maybe black. What do you guys think? White or black ink for the push? We're going to have the white thanks. I think white. It'll kind of blend in a little bit more. I hope that's okay. Executive decision. Okay, so we've let this dry for a while. I'm touching it up with my brush again, so it should not pick up any stray powder. I've got my Versamark pad. Okay, good. Oh, sorry, Melissa. Got my Versamark pad once. Also, this Versamark pad is older than my kids, and it's still going strong. I have never re-inked it, so, you know. It, it's a good product if you need one. Okay, white powder again. My friend Marianne was over crafting in the room with me. My white powder is pretty contaminated. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's there's some gook in there. <laughs> so she teases me. No, I did that. I don't. Well, we were cutting a million things uh, out of black and then embossing them. So I got a little, you know, those little stray hairs. That's what got in there. Okay, um, I'm going to put my push stamp away. Don't worry, that powder is it's not going to blow away. Um, it's not going to dry up that much, but I don't want to lose that little stamp. Get my misty out of the way. And then my gun. Out of 100. There we go. 
a little good here. We'll let it cool down for just a quick second. And then we'll get any stray powder out of the way. And from, I don't know if you guys can see this, there's a little bit of the um, texture from my towel. I touched it with a dirty side, but I think it looks kind of cool. It's almost backgroundy. So, okay. So we're good here. Now I do want to show you another quick trip tip. I learned this from Lydia Fiedler. If you have um, a cutter that's cutting kind of raw edges, these nail files, you can just kind of go around with them. And I do try to have one ugly side, like for colored paper and inked paper, and I use that. And this is, actually isn't bad, but sometimes, you know. So that's a good tip. I actually learned that from her twice because I forgot the first time, and then I saw her do it again and learned it a second time. Okay, so here's where we're at. We've got the push, we've got the light bulb, we've got the ink blending. We stamped onto our card base the push and the dot so we know where to position our light. And then we've got our sub sentiment and big sentiment here. But let's go ahead and adhere this down. We've got double stick tape. This is Sequang, uh, they call it, what is it called? Score tape. And anything, just any double stick tape will work. There is a little bit of weight to that battery, not a ton, but a little bit. So I like a strong double stick tape. And I'm just gonna pull back the release paper here. Now when I line it up, remember you want that yellow dot to go where your button is, and or where your star is, sorry, and the uh, button to go where we've marked push. And that just helps us line it up. In the center. Check once, push twice, right? Okay, no, check twice. <laughs> All right, there we go. So there's that. And now for the double thick foam tape. So remember, if you don't have double thick, just use uh, two layers of regular foam tape, fold it over on itself, and then you have one strip, you know? Um, this foam tape, we don't have it yet. We were supposed to have it a long time ago. It is a very long story of manufacturing issues. Um, but at some point in the future, we will have this foam tape. It is repositionable at first. It takes, you have a good 30 minutes of work time. And uh, that I'll show you what that means in a second. You can just lift it up. So it, it's repositionable at first, becomes permanent within 24 hours. And then we worked with them to make sure we had release paper that actually releases because I think that's like such a key thing. I mean, who wants to fight with release paper, right? So, and it'll be on big rolls, but, um, oh, let's see here. Um, it'll be on big rolls, but I had to send some back to the factory because they sent me some finished tape that had um, the wrong adhesive on it and I had to send back the uh, prototypes that were correct because they didn't believe me that they had made it all wrong. <laughs> so, so I just have some strips left. But at some point in the near future, we will have it. Okay, so I didn't pull off the release paper yet and I'm kind of wondering if I have a box there. Can you, can you see that? There's a bit of a box here. So if we want to fix that, what we can do is take some more of this black paper and let's see here. Let's line this guy up. How are we doing on time? Oh, we only have a few minutes. Okay, I'll go faster. Okay. So I'm gonna line this guy up. Luckily he's the right, right width there. A little bit shy. And that's fine. Line them up like this underneath my foam tape. I'm gonna grab that light bulb again. Oh, well, still, I'm gonna try to be respectful of your time. I'm gonna line him back up here. This will get us in the right ballpark on our black paper. Pick him up this out of the way somewhere there's a magnet here we go and 
I've got a white pad. You could use probably even a pink would show, but we'll use white just to make sure we can all see it. And I don't need this to be perfect. I'm not going to stamp it a bunch of times. I'm just going to stamp it the once. Clean that up in a minute. And that should be in the right area. So I'm going to cut him out. And I did. I thought ahead just in case I needed it. I'm going to just cut out the bulb, not the bottom silvery base. And I don't care if it's not 100% perfect. I just want to get in the, the ballpark because what we're doing is creating a blackout curtain to go behind the ink blended panel. Oh, of course I can't get it to turn. Okay. And this will just give us like a, a window for the light to come through on our panel and it'll get rid of the rest of that box that we were having. But the outline of the stamp itself will keep it cleaner so you don't have to be perfect with this. Let's take a quick look and I'll trim it in a second. We're off a little. There we go. Can you guys see that online? There we go. Sometimes the stuff doesn't always show in person. Oh, perfect. Okay, so now what I need to do is kind of trim this back. And I'm just going to fold it up with my fingers. And give myself the score because it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfectly perfect. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bit wrinkled because, because it doesn't. Okay. Now I'll use my little trimmer guy here. This is so fun. It's from Heffy Doodle. I just recently got it. Carol says she has your second pack. She can sell to them. She needs a promise pack. <laughs> this one? Yeah, this actually came with, it's a self-healing cutting and pounding mat. From Provocraft from like 20 years ago. I don't know, it's old. It's like at least I was still teaching at Scrapper's Edge, and that was like before Kelly was born and she's 16. So <laughs> somewhere in that neighborhood, I taught for years there. Um, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's it's old. Okay, so I think good here. Let's just check this. Oops, good thing I checked. Check it one more time. And I'm going to hold it up to my light. There we go. Make sure it's lined up. And that is lined up. Okay, great. So now I will just glue it down real quick. And this time I'm going to use my PVA. It's the paper to paper. It's quick drying. It's faster drying than the uh, Barely Arts or the Gina K. But those would work as well if you want to spend a little more time on it. But I do have that little bit of wiggle room. So I'm holding it up to my light, which you guys probably can't see on the camera. Making sure that it was lined up with my stamped image because I could see with the light there, I could see through the, um, the ink blended card. Here we go. There, that looks pretty cool, I think. Oh, I've got it off a little bit. This guy needs to move just a smidge. And I'm gonna wiggle. There we go. Let's try that. Hmm. Whole thing needs to move over. All right, Debbie, when you get this, your card base might be a little bit a little bit warped, but you know I love you. Yeah, I know. I need repositionable thin tape, right? Okay, let's do this one more time. Quickly, I promise we are on the home stretch. I have eight minutes, it says. Which, yeah. <laughs> All right, so over a little bit. Lining up and... 
Let's try that. No, why is it off? All right, remember I said that trick would work? Apparently it doesn't work all that great all the time. Pause that. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. Okay, and I can put a little bit more of my double thick foam tape here. So I have a little something in the middle. And you guys see this release paper is just coming right off. It's very simple. That was key to me. Even when I even when I cut it down into tiny pieces, it can definitely come off easily. So now I will line it up. And if I were, so let's say I just Put it down wrong. You see me pushing on it? It's wrong, obviously, but I can just gently peel it up and it comes right back off because you do have that working time. So this is coming soon. I don't know how soon because it was supposed to already be here, but it is coming and it's acid free. All the things we need for, for scrapbooking and whatnot. So there we go with this. The light part is done. Now we're just going to find our tweezers. And again, at this point, I'm just going to do, oh, actually, yeah. I will put the PVA glue here on the back here because I'm not stacking it up. I don't need to wait for a longer time for it to dry. Oh, and I did want to share with you, if you have those little hairs, use the side of your tweezers to kind of scrape them away. You can also use that nail file again. But there's a couple little hairs I want to scrape off real fast. And just the side of my tweezers is just, is enough to grip them. So there we go. Sometimes glitter paper seems to shed more or have more hairs. And I can always do it at the end as well. See? Get rid of those. And now I'm going to put this guy flat down here. This morning, I was gone for two nights. This morning, the rabbit that sleeps in the room with us, her name is Honey, she's a little bit crazy. She greeted me and then she pierced my finger. Can you see that red dot? <laughs> she, uh, she was excited and she bit me just because she knew I was going red. I'm actually going to tuck that up underneath the thanks a little bit. Try to make sure that it looks straight across. There we go. Light up card. The light bulb lights up. And then if we want, we can put a couple of these pretty little gems. These are the white iridescent gems. We have these in our shop too, along with a bunch of other ones. Um, any of these gems that are plastic like this and don't have silver on the back, Light will shine through those as well. So if you wanted to place them on top of a light, you definitely can, and it works great. I think I'm just gonna do three, something like that. And we have that other white up there. I'm gonna use the Barely Arts, and I did not cap it, and who knows where that darn pin is. That's kind of why Barely Arts is not my favorite, because I always lose that pen. Pin. Hmm. Jen Gross, I think Jen is here. She's got a cool new, oh, here it is. She's got a cool new glue holder that has a magnet on the side. So hold your glue upside down and the magnet holds the pin so you don't lose it. I've got my little jewel or um, I think it's called a jewel picker from Trinity Stamps, but one side is pointy, one side is um, wax. So it'll pick up your gems. You can put good glue here. You don't want to use PVA in this case because PVA doesn't hold on to plastic very well. It holds paper. There we go. And if you needed to move them around or if you got too much goop, you could scrape it away with a scraper. But I think we're going to call that a finished card. And we have three minutes to spare. I don't know how I did that, but there we go. What do you guys think?
Debbie, this is coming your way. <laughs> oh, I don't have that glue holder. That um, uh, Jen Gross, Journey Coach Jen, she's in here. She's got, she's got the glue holder. Jen, if you put a post or if you put it on your um, Instagram, people can find it, I think, at Journey Coach Jen. Same handle as for YouTube here. Oh, do you guys want to see since we have three minutes left? I'm going to show you another new product that I'm working with. And I'm letting this make sure it's dry before I get rid of any of these little hairs. And I'll get those 100% out of the way before I take pictures and share this with you guys. Look. Okay. So people have been asking for twinkle lights. So we made some. These are prototypes at this point. Isn't this fun? And the longer you let it go, the more out of sync they will get. I love it. It's fun. <laughs> so these are in the works. We'll probably have these in about two months, I think. Um, so, you know, start thinking about like Valentine's projects that you might want. Twinkling stars, heartbeats, that kind of stuff. I think they're fun. So every time you let go and then push it again, they start together and then they will slowly get out of sync. And it's only as long as you're holding the button. When I take my finger off, it stops. So those are coming soon. I hope you guys are going to keep an eye out for those too. And let's see. So we're the last stop in the hop. So I've got the link again to the form for prizes and back to Debbie's first video so that you guys can catch the replay. Um, if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe, ring that bell. I make a lot of interactive cards. I don't put out a ton of videos, but when I do, I think they're fun. <laughs> so if you uh, ring that bell, you'll get notifications whenever we do go live or put out a new video. Um, and like I said, feel free to hit subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Congratulations again, Debbie. I am super excited for you. Let me uh, go back to this camera. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And uh, it's just starting to get evening here, or become evening here. So I'm going to go have dinner. Bye, guys. If I can find the button. There we go.